Open Science Festival. Meet, share, inspire, care. This one is an international panel and will be on open science from global perspectives. And um, the host of this panel is my lovely colleague, Dr. Eva Seidelmeier, as you can already see. Um, Eva describes her career as follows. Once I was a philosopher on my way from ancient philosophy to machine learning. I think this sounds quite interesting. <laughs> um, Eva studied uh, philosophy and ancient history in Frankfurt on the Main and did a PhD in philosophy. Later, she turned to library and information science and did a Marlis degree here in Cologne. Uh, she worked in the Data Stew project and since December 2002, 22, sorry, Eva is PI in the project Aquas, um, which stands for Automatic Quality Assessment, NLP methods for semantic math mapping of life science text funded. And the project is funded by the German Research Foundation, DFG. So Eva, it's your turn now. Please <laughs> take over. Thank you so much, Jasmin. Yeah, following what we've learned in Benedict Fächer's keynote, we um, can take this um, panel discussion now as a, uh, yeah, f uh, falling into the category of a democratic movement and the meaning of open science, I guess. So we will now talk about the global perspective on um, open science. And um, yeah, beforehand, uh, some announcements there, um, unfortunately, uh, unfo unfortunately The panel, as it was announced, melted down a little bit. As you can see, we are not sitting here with five persons, but only with three. Hector Chui um, was not able to join due to a visa issue. Uh, with him, we lost an important part of our announced global um, view. Um, he's from Guatemala. However, um, Hector sent a video last night, um, so we can at least listen to some of the aspects he wanted to contribute to the panel. It's a four minutes video, so I guess we can. Um, it's okay to see it at the panel. Uh, we also um, um, have another video of uh, Jo Havemann um, of Africa Archive. Uh, who's also not able to join. Um, you can see her video um, not in the panel because it's quite long, it's uh, over eight minutes, but um, later on in the break, um, in the break um, where, when we have lunch. So in the beginning you can stay and we can um, have a look on her video altogether where she presents Africa Archive and this is also um, quite interesting and so please uh, take uh, the time to see the video. And we will also um, link it on the website so you have the chance to see it anyway. Yeah, however, <laughs> we still have uh, two um, panelists here in person and I'm pretty sure we will have a dense discussion anyway. Um, right in the middle you see Nino Pavel Paveliashvili, we, we, tr we uh, tr tried it before, but now I'm co totally confused with the name. So Nino Pavliashvili from um, Tbilisi um, in Georgia. Um, Nino is the director of the National Science Library, so it is somehow a sister library of ZPMET, and the National Science Library works close together in an EU Horizon partnership, and Nino, um, or rather the National Library, they also publish um, some open access journals. But I guess you will explain this further um, soon. Yeah. Welcome to Cologne, Nino. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, good day, dear colleagues. colleagues. It's my great pleasure to participate in this um, uh, Open Science Festival. And uh, thanks for inviting and uh, to give this possibility to share my experience, experience of Georgia to so important uh, colleagues. Mm. And it's also super um, to have you here, but I, I just um, also announce um, or present um, uh, Prince. We also like to welcome Prince Idem Samo, who came all the way from Berekuso in Ghana. Prince is researcher and laboratory technician at Ashesi University and the Bioeconomy Lab. And he will also conduct a workshop tomorrow on open enzyme which I am particularly looking forward to join. Also to you, Prince, warm welcome. Thank you. Um, yeah. Okay. Ah, yeah. 
I will just shortly explain what we have in mind for this panel. Uh, first, we will have two short input rounds followed by a question round. So um, you're the audience, uh, you are warm invited to um, express your questions and comments to Nino and Prince. But first we start with uh, those um, short input rounds. Um, I um, ask um, Nino and Prince um, to um, just to introduce um, their work in their um, institutions and what they um, do, um, yeah. Um, so maybe we start with Nino. Okay. <laughs> Would you um, um, present what your activities regarding open science are at the National Library at Tbilisi? Uh, okay, thank you very much. Uh, uh, structure of my presentation is uh, this. We, I, I separate three different parts of uh, presentation, and uh, I would like to uh, speak with you about uh, what is the um, government level of open access in Georgia, which kind of activities our university uh, do in uh, terms of open access, and what are uh, our National Science Library's uh, services related with, um, with open science. Um, as I said, um, government takes a lot of attention uh, about about um, uh, our um, about open science and Ministry of uh, Science and Education of Georgia has already written some uh, large uh, part uh, about open science in the, their strategy and uh, working documents. So this is very important. And then uh, on another level, we take very more big attention uh, to EOSC portal. Uh, in this way, we already uh, from 2022, uh, uh, one uh, another, uh, my colleague and I, we are participate the EOSC steering board meetings as observers. Uh, we have already one uh, repository from my library, National Science Library, uh, fully implemented in EOSC platform. And uh, also we had a small uh, tripartite meeting uh, in uh, EOSC uh, in, uh, on, September, on November of 2022. Uh, this all uh, helps to our colleague, to our scientists, uh, more clear understand uh, subjects of open science and be more or less part of this um, part of this um, our, our platform from uh, government uh, from scientific university levels uh, we had more or less um, follow in georgia um, follow the open science uh, aspects in georgia we have approximately 60 university uh, government and private universities. Private university is, of course, more than government university, but government university has uh, uh, his own uh, strategy and his own, um, uh, let, me, let me find my, my, <laughs> my, my part. Uh, um, uh, researchers in the university has uh, obligation to be uh, to work uh, in two different uh, separate levels as uh, teacher and uh, researchers. Researchers uh, part uh, the part of uh, working of researchers consists two different uh, uh, section. First of all, they must. Um, uh, they must uh, participate uh, at last. Uh, abstract, uh, at last the abstract level uh, to international uh, conferences, uh, and uh, they must uh, publish at last two different uh, articles in um, high, highly uh, rated uh, journals. 
Uh, and this is very important because um, uh, research uh, activities is uh, uh, give to possibility to students and also researchers and uh, uh, doctorants uh, work together and uh, share information. Uh, from the um, uh, share information, uh, both of um, uh, universities as private as uh, uh, government university has, of course, uh, small and or big difficulties about fin financial. I mean, financial difficulties. That means that many young researchers uh, leave country and go to work uh, abroad for uh, for um, more uh, good, for better uh, scientific um, working place situation or for to bring uh, to, to take a little bit more uh, salary. Uh, this uh, gives us, uh, as a result, uh, in Georgia we have um, universities and uh, professors' uh, age is very very high. That uh, and their qualification maybe is good, but uh, they have not uh, good um, they have not good attitude of. Um, they have not good attitude of uh, digital uh, skills, and this uh, gives uh, this. This is not good. Mm -hmm. Of course, you understand. And uh, doctor and R do this job uh, uh, for uh, our um, professors, and of course uh, the um, open science uh, at attentions and uh, attentions to the open science from these uh, professors is not is not um, enough and is not good, and uh, we understand this. This is very big problem for us, and um, this problem uh, about uh, our, um, our sorry about uh, our national science library. I would like to say that. Um, uh, we give a lot of uh, part and we, give, we provide a lot of services uh, to have I time to speak about uh, all this subject or um, what about the, the problems um, and plans we, we do in the second round. Okay. Yeah? Okay. Uh, uh, first of all, I would like to say about my um, our, about repositories of uh, Georgian National Science Library. We have two repositories. One of them is, as I say, is included already uh, in open access um, EOSC portal, and the other is a repository where we collect uh, Georgian digital uh, digital materials from our library. Uh, we have another platform, uh, Open Journals uh, G, where we store uh, all Georgian electronic journals, uh, scientific electronic journals. There it, uh, is uh, there are about approximately 40 different journals on different level, different kind of scientific uh, scientific uh, works. And uh, since 2001, we are part of uh, data set. And uh, just from this year, we start uh, starting working uh, in um, Crossref, and we uh, give DOI to as for uh, articles uh, we publish uh, on our live open science.g repository as the journals who we, we which we have uh, in electronic version. Uh, we provide um, seven section different uh, kind of uh, trainings for scientists and researchers, uh, and we try to uh, follow from beginning to uh, to end to publishing uh, for all scientists and help them to understand correctly what uh, what to do and how to do it. Uh, annually, we uh, subscribe. Uh, Many databases, approximately all, approximately uh, all level of scientists, and we try to we try to have uh, as much uh, electronic uh, information, electronic databases of journals and uh, electronic books as possible, and we provide uh, the, this uh, material as from our building as remotely, and we, we use a remote access portal for uh, remote uh, for our scientists this information. Uh, we have uh, several uh, workshops 
in uh, our library uh, for scientists to understand, the uh, understand their needs and wishes. And uh, last of them was um, last of them was um, uh, in April of uh, this year, and we had um, uh, very la two days workshop about uh, science, science wish, uh, about, about the subject, and uh, they participate uh, 16 different participants from 12 the 12 uh, country and. Uh, Approximately 40 uh, universities and uh, scientists, uh, scientists, institutions, participants, li uh, mostly li librarians. Um, this is all what we are provide for for our uh, scientists and how we try to be implement in open access. How we uh, promote them and how we uh, try make more popular and more accessible for Georgian researchers um, uh, open access, uh, open science. Thank you for attention. Great, Nino. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Good to hear what's uh, all going on at National Science Library in Georgia. So what's um, up with uh, regarding open science at uh, Bioeconomy Lab and Ashesi University, Prince? Can we have the yes. second presentation? Hello. Um, thank you very much, and uh, I am happy to be here. Um, so my work in um, open science cuts across um, these number of institutions. So I am the lab manager and the researcher um, with Ashesi University, um, and I work with the Open Bioeconomy Lab in Cambridge, UK. And then I co-founded um, the High Bio Lab, which is a community lab um, in Ghana, where, where we look at how do we use um, open science, um, open hardware, open source tools to um, solve local issues in the community, as well as educating um, the community. And then um, I'm a part of the my fellow for um, the Rick Lone Network, where um, a f um, policy fellow, where we are looking at um, how do we come up with policies that um, allows our researchers to be more um, open to um, contributing to open science and then also um, having access to all the resources that we have as part of the Reclone Network. Um, so some of my work that are related to open science, um, these are the things that I'll talk about. Um, so the first one is uh, um, the open DNA ladder. Um, for all the molecular biology people, you know that um, if you run a, whatever gel you want to run, DNA, you need um, a DNA ladder. And from where I'm coming from in Ghana and Africa, having access to DNA ladder is very expensive. And in terms of getting it shipped into the country um, can take you three months. Um, so imagine you have to do research and you run out of DNA ladder and it takes you about three months to get um, this to come in the country. And talk about um, the cold chain storage that it has to go through. And when it gets to the ports, um, the those people that have no idea about what it is, they are going to go through your stuff, and by the time it gets to you, you're having issues. So what we are trying to do here is that um, we are creating a, a plasmid um, that can be shared freely under OpenMTA. Um, so as part of the things we do, we look at um, open material transfer agreements where we can easily share everything we publish in our uh, paper in open source. So we don't really don't end at um, our work in open science, but we also make available all the results and um, whatever materials that we um, come up with in our research, we make it available. So this is going to be um, where we are currently working on this. Um, we are creating this plasmid that um, when you digest, um, gives you the DNA ladder and you can actually get a plasmid from us for free and then you just keep on having um, this DNA ladder so you are tired of using it. Um, and then, um, on the Rick Lone Network, um, so we um, looking at globally, um, or the Global South, for example, um, looking at how do we make um, these resources available to uh, most of these communities. So during when COVID um, hits, we realized that we really lack in terms of how do we get access to these um, resources, reagents and consumables needed to do um, all the research that, that needs to be done. So we came up with um, this recruitment network where we look at people coming together to share knowledge, um, share resources. And um, as part of the Open Bioeconomy Lab, um, we created this um, open enzyme, which I'll talk about in my workshop tomorrow on how to use this um, collective um, DNA that are available and um, off patents. How do you create your own um, reagents to do diagnosis or to do 
whatever research that you have to do and making sure that it's of high quality and um, high standard. So, yep. All right, and then in terms of uh, hardware, um, so again, um, the issue is that um, having access to these high quality um, commercial um, hardware to do qualitative and quantitative research is very expensive. Um, costs about $20,000, which <laughs> we don't have that kind of money to do um, those things. Um, so as part of um, my work, we look at a lot of um, open source hardware, um, both for education and um, mainly for educational purposes. So we have built, or I've led the building of um, the open flasher microscope, um, where basically the, so the idea behind building this open source microscope was that um, in our universities, we realized that um, teaching anything that um, needs microscope to be done research, we have about one microscope in the lab for about 300, 400 students. That really makes it very difficult. So with this tool, um, we built it very cheap, um, less than um, $150 that we can actually use it to do most of our education um, related works. And then we have the open source um, incubator for doing molecular biology work. We built a bioreactor for um, producing the enzymes that we look at, and then the calorimeter as well. And then um, the BioEngine um, Africa and um, the Africa Symbio Academy. Um, so one major um, issue we have is um, the knowledge of synthetic biology in Africa is uh, very um, unknown. Most people do not know what synthetic biology is, and we don't have it in our curriculums in the universities, um, even in undergrad in universities. Literally, I finished university before I knew what synthetic biology was, right? As somebody who did biomedical engineering, I finished university before I, could, I even had any idea what synthetic biology was. Um, so what we are trying to do is, um, with the help, uh, with the collaboration with Cambridge and Imperial College London, we are um, coming together to build um, a synthetic biology um, handbook um, curriculum that can be incorporated into already existing um, structures in the university where um, you can teach synthetic biology and uh, make it very accessible and also um, given, uh, making the resources and everything that needs to be done in all these modules. So we have a lot of modules from design to building to testing to entrepreneurship as part of um, the curriculum where we teach you what it is about and everything here is actually very open. So that is, um, so the BioEngine Africa looked at merging this curriculum into um, the um, the university level, and then the Symbio Africa, which is um, a product of um, iGEM last year, we look at um, how do we make it available to anybody at all who is interested in learning synthetic biology, not necessarily in the, um, the university settings, anybody at all who is interested in learning about synthetic biology. So we're making this um, resources ready, readily available on a platform that um, with videos and everything that you need to actually um, self-teach yourself, everything you need to know about um, synthetic biology. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I think everybody is really impressed what you what you do. Thank you. Um, I um, I suggest we just see the short video of um, Hector Tui of Guatemala, and he's also stressing the point of indigenous people and the knowledge how um, of the indigenous people and how it can contribute to open science. It's only four minutes. My name is Hector Tui. I work for the GAZ in Guatemala. In the past, I had the privilege of being the director of the Institute of Agriculture and Natural Resources at the University Rafael Andívar in Guatemala. I am also a member and partner of various organizations that promote open science, including Eval Indigenous and ACS. Latin America has made significant progress in embracing open science principles and practices. Institutions, researchers, and organizations in the region have recognized the importance of openness, collaboration, and transparency in, in advancing scientific knowledge. Key developments include the establishment of open access repositories, adoption of open data policies, and promotion of open research practices. Latin American scientists have also contributed to the development of open source tools and software to support scientific research. However, challenges um, such as limited resources, infrastructure gaps, and unique access to information and technology still exist. Capacity building initiatives and increased support for researchers in underprivileged regions are needed to overcome these challenges.
While the open size movement in Latin America has gained momentum, it is crucial to address the specific challenges and opportunities for indigenous people in the region, particularly in Guatemala. Indigenous knowledge systems hold immense value in addressing societal challenges and sustainable development. However, there is a need to bridge the gap between traditional knowledge and scientific research. Challenges faced by indigenous communities include limited access to education and research opportunities, language barriers and marginalization of their knowledge uh, within main mainstream scientific discourse. To embrace uh, open science from a global perspective, it is important to ensure the inclusion and meaningful participation of indigenous communities, taping into their traditional knowledge and addressing issues that directly affect their communities. I briefly want to share a case study that exemplifies the potential of open science in the context of indigenous communities. I have been collaborating with researchers from McGill University on a research program focusing on food security in indigenous territories and communities in Guatemala. The research is conducted in the local languages of the communities, acknowledging their cultural context and ensuring their active participation. Several scientific articles have been published in Spanish and English, with the first article in Cachiquel, one of the Guatemala's official languages, set to be published in a peer-reviewed journal. This case uh, study demonstrates how open science can promote inclusivity, empower indigenous communities, and bridge the gap between traditional knowledge and um, scientific research. In conclusion, open science presents an opportunity for a more inclusive and equitable scientific landscape in Latin America. By empowering indigenous communities and promoting cultural respect, research can have a stronger impact and create positive change. I want to express my gratitude for the invitation and hope for closer collaboration in the areas of open science and indigenous knowledge systems in the near future. Thank you. And also a virtual digital thank you to Hector. Please reach out for him if you want to get in contact with him and with his uh, Guatemal Guatemaltecian view. <laughs> um, um, Hector already um, talked about challenges and opportunities um, of um, open science for the indigenous people in Guatemala. Um, and I also asked you uh, beforehand where you see potential or um, yeah, a critique or what hinders open science in your uh, specific uh, working context. Um, would you also like to share those uh, thoughts with us? Will you start again, Dino? Mm. Uh, open science works uh, big uh, has has a big role to our works and our specific specific uh, specific uh, it has specific role for uh, our library. We try to um, develop them as much as possible, as I said already. And uh, uh, Georgian scientists has uh, a large possibilities and can uh, have the. Uh, have possibility to participate in this uh, field and also share the experience and uh, give uh, to find to uh, colleague to collaborate uh, with uh, with them and make more scientific uh, research and um, share this information and share the, their experience for for everyone. What would you contribute? Um, thank you. Um, so um, I'll start with the challenge of um, open science um, from my settings. Um, so just before I sent in my, uh, my slides, I decided to just humor myself. And I just did this poll. And I asked some of my colleagues what they think about open science. And you'll be surprised one third of um, all the people that I got the feedback from who are actually um, researchers. Um, most of them do not know what open science is, um, which is quite interesting. And mm -hmm. I went ahead to those who said they knew what open science was. I asked them um, 
what they think um, open science means, and it shows you that the response shows you that they don't even know what um, it is actually about. Um, they've heard it, um, but they don't know what open science is. So um, the knowledge of open science um, is not really um, known um, in Ghana. Um, most people do not know what open science is. They've heard about um, open um, data and all those things, but they don't really know what open science is. And then the second is um, the trust, right? Um, most researchers do not trust even their own colleagues. And I've had one, um, my undergrad mentor, who once told me that I should be careful um, the people I share my science with. And he made a comment that don't trust these white people, they will steal your ideas. Right. So that was, um, and he still holds on to that idea many, many years ago. I don't know why. So um, there is a pretty much trust issue. Um, there's a, and then the last um, issue with them, or the challenge that we have with them, open science has to do with um, having access to the resources um, to be able to even replicate or improve or use whatever idea that was published in this um, open science um, work to actually improve to do your own work, right? So as part of my work, that's why we try to make everything um, under OpenMTA, right? So you can actually get everything that we publish in our, um, our work. Um, we can send you everything to actually help you um, to be able to do your work. So we move beyond just publishing in open um, access journals, but also giving you access to everything that we publish. Um, I think um, the, the potential of open science is, um, is going to um, see Ghanaians and Africans actually um, do more advanced research in terms of um, building on some of the work that has actually been done already. Because sometimes, one thing I realized was that before you keep sh you said you won't share your ideas, and before you realize somebody has published it, even before you even started doing your work, and whilst you're waiting for your reagents and consumables, somebody has published your work, something similar to your work, and then you have to go back to redefine what you are actually trying to do. So um, I think with um, the, the potential I see with um, open science is actually um, going to revolutionize how we do our research and how fast and how accessible and the quality of the kind of research that um, come out of um, these institutions. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, I agree with... Uh, mm, you want Prince? to add? Yeah. yeah, I agree with Prince. Uh, trust uh, with open science is a very, very big problem in my country too. This is so interesting, um, and maybe I, we, we want to open um, um, the question um, or, or give you the opportunity also to, to uh, raise your questions, but maybe I can just uh, give a follow-up question. So um, this issue with, with trust, is it because there is so much concurrence uh, about job positions, and so it is more a matter of, uh, of, of working conditions at, at universities, and if you would change this, then um, people would be more open to open also their data and their, um, their um, yeah, research um, and knowledge. So is this connected, would you say? Yeah, um, so I think it's true um, because even in the same um, department, there's a lot of competition on who gets the next available um, position. So it is an issue. Um, but then I think that is not the only issue. It's mm -hmm. just trust in general, um, they lack trust in general because, I mean, yeah. you, you don't compete with somebody outside your country, right? Like, I mean, if you're working together to solve a problem, then you should be open to working together to solve the problem. So I think it moves beyond just competing within themselves in the department. With the university I work in, which actually um, enforces or enhances collaboration because um, they have this policy that if you're doing a research alone, there is you get like $5,000 to do your research, but if you're collaborating on working with other people, you get $50,000, so $50,000 to do your research. So they enforce or sort of try to um, prevent that issue that exists in those local universities by trying to um, bring new means of um, actually collaborating with people. So actually, um, if you look at the quality of work that comes out from these institutions um, that are currently working as against the ones that are very, you realize that there's a vast difference between the quality of the work that comes out and I think um, it's just trust in general. They don't, they don't really trust um, their own colleagues, let alone trust people from um, outside. Okay, thank you so much. We reached um, the, the time, the end of the time of um, our panel. Um, I'm so grateful to have you here in Cologne. Thank you so much. And now we, yeah, we leave the stage for um, the Ignite Talks. Thank so you very much for inviting. <laughs>